Home Rastafari. The last video had stopped a little inadvertently, unexpectedly, but we're gonna continue on this theme of the the last days of Sukkot from the Hosha'ina Rabba, right, or the Great Salvation, right, or Hoshana, the Hoshana, right, the Hoshana Rabba, the Great Salvation, which is actually the seventh day. Right, then we have the eighth day, which is the Shemeni Atzeret, right? The Shemeni Atzeret, which is that gathering, right? That gathering of I and I selves together on that eighth day, right? And it's interesting because the Torah portion reading and feedings, how that connects with the New Testament reading and feeding, which regards the transfiguration on the mount. I found that to be especially interesting and an especially interesting um, meditation on that to see the connection because we want to actually touch on the transfiguration of the mount, but there's a key kind of a key word there. But what I wanted to propose right here is that the Feast of uh, Tabernacles, right? The Feast of Tabernacles or as ones might know it, the dwelling in uh, booths, Right, let's bring up the booths right here. The dwelling in booths, right, for those seven days, that tabernacles actually is a water festival. Right? It's a festival that has at its heart water, and we're speaking of the living waters, right, that are manifested by Yeshua HaMoshiach, I and I great salvation. So in seeing this connection right here, that Sukkot, right, is actually a water festival, or at its heart, it has the symbol of water. I want you to meditate on that, right, as well as check out Hebrew for Christians, both the Hoshana Rabba page, as well as the Shemeni Atzeret. So we're basically speaking about the seventh day of Sukkot. Right, or of tabernacles, or of indwelling in booths. Right, where we indwell and we indwell in booths for those seven days. Now, that is in the old covenant, we have a shadow and a type, but in the New Testament, we have the substance, right, and that substance is found in Hamushiach, right, that substance is found in the Messiah. That substance is found in Christos Yegziaviher Lich in Hamushia Bain Elohim Chayim, the son of the living power. Right? The living power. Now, notice how there's an overt connection when we start to read and properly divide the scripture. And this is what I really love about the Hebrew for Christian site coming from a a, a Jewish or a Judaic, right? Remember, we as Ethiopian Hebrews, we are Judaic. This is why the lion of the tribe of Judah, right? Where the whole connection with the lion of the tribe of Judah. So Sukkot is actually a water festival, a water feast, a water festival. It, it, because it's a, when we go through that festival at the, at the on the eighth day, the Shemeni Atzeret, which was actually, I guess, in this Western way, we can say that it was the 16th. We actually recording this on October 17, 2014, and we're in the blood moon sign. There are heavenly signs. This is where we was. We are left off reading, right? We are left off reading in um, Romans chapter one when the recording had inadvertently stopped. So here we're going to just pick up with this so we can just make this, um, this, this word of prophecy, right? You know, this word of prophecy, which is the spirit of Yeshua, right? That the guilty world, according to Romans chapter one, verse 18, right? Speaking of the guilty world, speaking of the gospel of the good news is a revelation Right? Now that water is that grace right there. Right? The water symbolizes that grace. But what we also have manifest, okay, this is for the Shemeni Atzeret, right? What we also have 
manifests is the judgment, right? That judgment. So for those who receive Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? He says, come to me, all ye that thirst, right? You know, all ye that thirst, and he will give to drink of the living waters. So you can see that connection. Now here, this is, I think, uh, Wendem Alonso's, right? One of his arts right here. I saw this before and I kept on the sign and it's very interesting because this is called rock water, you know, where they struck the, you know, they struck the rock, right? And the waters came out for the Israelites, you know what I mean? And this is interesting because we see, we see within that Old Testament type and shadow the substance of the new, the substance of the true in Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? So now Sukkot, right, the tabernacles or the Feast of Tabernacles has passed. The seventh day is the Hoshana Rabbah or that great salvation. And, and, and that word, that Hoshana, Hosanna, Hosanna, you know, the key, the connection with Yeshua riding upon the donkey, right, into Jerusalem, and there's that whole connection right there. Now, it's important for us to note that when they said those things, what the season, right, what was that season? So it's, it's now rightly dividing the word, rightly studying the word from Old Testament, where we get the basic shadow and type from the Orit, the Torah, right, and then the fullness of it, the revelation, the true substance, in the Brit Hadasha, in the new. So here's what the word says. And now this is the Wengel. This is the gospel. This is the Besora. Let the, the gospel, the good news of the King of Kings in Christ, in the anointed, in Hamoshiach, I and I, Black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is a revelation of wrath also. Remember what we said in, in the part one, and you'll see this on the Hoshana Rabbah page on the Hebrew for Christians. Right, so if ones and ones, you know, are able to link that, please do link that, right? But that explains the half of the story. And when we now begin to study it from that perspective, such as the Hebrew for Christians has it, we can then begin to understand, okay, this is the Old Testament types. But now this is the fulfillment in the new. Now the fulfillment in the new of the Shemeni Atzeret, we have the transfiguration Right, we have the transfiguration on the mount. Right, that transfiguration on the mount. And here's one of the word picks art that we had for for that particular teaching right there. The transfiguration on the mount. Right? On the mount of transfiguration or Deborah Tabor, right? Or Mount Tabor. Very, very, you know, very, very important. Right there. Now, this thing, uh, I'm looking at the power thing behind the scenes right here. Let me just get through this scripture right here as well so you can hopefully see a connection here. May the Holy Spirit bring that, you know, to revelation. Right? Um, so, the guilty world, the gospel of revelation of wrath also. Remember what time we're in, 2012, coming into the Shemitah year, into a Jubilee year, into a year of release. Let my people go, Pharaoh, right? For the wrath of Elohim, Kedamawi, Haile Selassie, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Now, the next part is that the universe, verses 19 to 20, is that the universe or the universe is a revelation of the power, the Chayel, Right, the Chayel, as we have as the root of the El, Chayel, Ha'el, the El in Elohim, right? The power and the deity or the divinity, the Melakot of Egeziyavi, here the sustainer Yahweh. Because that which may be known of Egeziyavi, here the sustainer Elohim, is manifest in them, for Elohim have shewed it to them. When we look at nature, when we look at the creation, he is showing us. Verse 20 makes it very clear. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. The, the what? 
the invisible, the not visible things. So when we look at the visible creation, we should recognize that the invisible things of him, of Elohim, Baruch Hu, blessed be he, from the creation of the world, they are clearly seen. Right? For those who have that single eye, right? As Yeshua speaks of, being understood or overstood by the things which are, that, that are made. Even his eternal, how long is eternal? His eternal, his everlasting, his unending, his eternal power and Godhead, the Melakot, so that they are without excuse, right? So that humanity and I and I are without excuse. So we see the visible things. And this is why I'm studying up on the whole evolution. I, I like the disciples and the correspondents and others to really, let's, let's get up on the, the evolution thing. In other words, let's break that down, right? Because th there's a bunch of lies with the pseudoscience, pseudognosis is out there. The pseudognosis. That's what Paul speaks about. Science falsely so-called. It denies his eternal power. And science falsely so-called, it denies his Godhead. And it also denies I and I when they said that I and I, as the so-called black man, is only three-fifths. They are denying his race and they have fallen from his grace. Now, that is taking the point, you know, along another line of prophetic revelation but I just want to put this in and put this out here to you, brothers and sisters, that connection with the Shemeni Atzeret, right? And what is that Shemeni Atzeret? That's that gathering. Remember how when Yeshua gathered with them and then he took, right, I think two or three of them and he went to that mount, right? And who was he seen with? He was seen with those two witnesses, right? And who are those two witnesses? Well, here we have an example of the two witnesses, right? In the true to race and in grace, right? Let's, let's get these two witnesses right here and zoom in over here, right? And this is what the um, New Testament reading for the Shemeni Atzeret speaks on, on that transfiguration on the mount. Now, when you look at the Mark part, it's very good, right? The, you know, the Mark reading. Right, and you'll find that on the chart for the Sukkot, right? The Sukkot, you look for the for the Shemeni Atzeret, and you look for the New Testament readings. Now we're gonna have to move forward with the Simchat Torah, right? Because this is this is where this Eve, right? The Shabbat Eve is the Simchat Torah, and what does the Simchat Torah mean? The Simchat Torah is the joy of the Orit. Because he says to us, this is our what? This is our wisdom. What is our wisdom? The Torah is I and I wisdom in the sight of all the heathen. So run, go tell uh, Ziggy Marley, he don't have to be jealous with the Jewish culture, right? When you know the truth and the true roots of the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is why we have to study, my brothers and sisters. This is why His Majesty said those gracious words to us. For my part, I glory in the Bible. Right? So the Simchat Torah, we call and we know as the Orit. Right? The Orit. This is Orit right here. The Orit Desita. Right? Or the joy of Torah. Because here's where we begin. Right? We begin... You know, we begin in the beginning, right? We begin in the beginning. But the beginning, before we get to the beginning, the first reading, right? We first of all fulfill the blessing, the baraka. And this brings us forward to where we started out, right? To say that it's a water, right? It's a water season, right? That, 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 that Sukkot, right? It, it brings us into that Shemeni Atzeret, which is a prayer for the latter rain. And that rain, we know, is important for the land. But now Yeshua HaMoshiach, the Savior of our nefesh, the Savior of our souls, our soul is the bride, 
Right? Our soul is to be the bride of the bridegroom, Hamushia. And what does he say concerning the waters? What does he speak concerning the waters? Well, first of all, in Isaiah 12 and 3, it says, With joy shall you draw water out of the wells.